I'm with that. I'm with that. Uh, what you think about? Yo, did you uh, did you see this? Yes, sir. Can you pull? You got you got a clip? Can we pull it up? I think I could. Um, so speaking of Shannon Sharp, <laughs> um, uh, 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 Steve Stout was on Shannon Sharp's show. Uh, they were in the in the, in the car talking, and he starts talking about uh, uh, Steve Stout starts talking about Dame Dash. Hold on, Steve Stout. You know, it's funny. I talked to I talked to um Stally about Dame Dash as well. So it's crazy that Dame Dash is um is trending now. But I was talking to Stally because I was saying, yo, because. In a point of Stanley career, he he left MMG because he felt like he couldn't be um they had Even creative they had creative differences, right? So he felt like he couldn't do it exactly what he wanted to do because they was pushing agenda or pushing a narrative, not a narrative, but they was pushing him in a direction that he didn't want to go. And mm -hmm. I remember at a time he worked, well, I don't remember. I did my research and I found out that at a time he worked with uh creative control and uh right. DD172, which is Dame yep. Dash. And yep. and I was saying, yo, like. People always talk stuff about Dame Dash because they say like he's problematic, or whatever the case may be. And we look at somebody like Jay Z who hasn't really spoke up as much, and you see the success that he got. And I was saying, do you think, um, I guess, standing on what you believe in can hurt your career? And like, is it worth it? And he was like, it's mandatory. So the fact mm -hmm. that like people are talking about, uh, or Steve Stout is talking about Dame Dash in this manner, it makes me think because. On one side, it's like, yeah, stick up, stand up for what you believe in. But on the other side, it's like, it's kind of like the the um Steve Harvey and Monique conversation, right? You remember that conversation? We like, bro, my family don't want to hear all that. Like, like we gotta eat. You get me? Right. So I was wondering, just curious before you even pull it up, like, what you think about that? Um, I definitely believe what you what you're saying. I agree with Stally. Uh, that your man, your life and your life path is yours. And you got to follow it the best way you know how. You know what I mean? Uh, people are trying to make these distinctions between Dame Dash being a failure in public perception and Jay being the victor or being the winner out of it because one has a billion and we don't know how much Dame Dash has. They're saying that Dame Dash doesn't have money. Dame Dash is doing exactly what he wants to do with his life. I'm pretty and sure he is. That's <laughs> I would and never say he's broke, though. I can tell you guys that he charges at the minimum 10 stacks to do interviews. Mm. Imagine how many interviews he's done. And that's at minimum. I'm saying in a lot of these platforms, he's charging more. So and it don't matter whether it's a black platform, white platform. So he's getting paid. So he's making money doing that. That ain't got nothing to do with his. Uh, network pages where people pay money that has nothing to do with his clothing line that makes money, his eyeglass line that makes money. Uh, he still sells motor oil. He's got so so this man that we call broke seems to be doing pretty well in life. You know what I'm saying? I don't think uh, we're calling him broke though. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't well, say that. In the clip, he Steve Stout is insinuating that. Oh, play it. I'm gonna bring it up. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 let's get to the clip, bro. I end up. Even the Damon Dash, Dash interview, as fucked, fucked up as that was, he's, he's a gigantic, gigantic, almost, almost not. He blew it. He had Jay Z. He had the most important artist of his so, generation. So, so, what happened with that relationship? How did that relationship that was so good sour so fast? Dame's antics. Would just it became like people also over time you mature right. it's like you, you didn't have friends at 16 but by the time you turned 19 they were still doing the same shit right he was 16 right. and you're right. like right. i can't like, yeah we gotta, I gotta I, yeah we gotta you know I, you start spending less and less time with them because right. of it it's like one of those things where dame dame wouldn't change the way he spoke to people the way he treated people his he was angry about what bro you getting paper he was angry because he had a strong perspective about his business philosophy and if any time a partner of theirs tried to like go around him or um meanwhile people weren't going around him the people around him wanted to meet with other people. Right. They, they, people wanted were, were becoming less beholden to him, but he was unaware of it. Then he would like, you know, while he was building businesses, which probably he was, 
he would go off all around the world with cameras and girls and all kinds of crazy shit and then come back flipping out on everybody as if, you know. They were wrong. Yeah. Or, or like, why'd you guys do all this shit without me? Like, bro, you didn't build a business that was so operationally tight that you could just go away and come back and right. shit be the same and all that shit. It wasn't even like that. Jay grew up. You know, Jay wanted more. I think Jay seen Dame's ceiling. I mean, I think that's really what it was. I mean, uh, uh, Jay seen Dame ceiling. You can't. Mm. All right. I, I don't so, think he said he was broke for. I didn't get. He was saying he was broke from that though. Well, you, you got to It's more. It's a twelve minute clip. I, I but and I, I watched. I watched it. Um, what I will say is, and this is my perspective. And I lo- I would like to say for the record, uh, I'm a great admirer of Steve Stout. I'm a great admirer of Dame Dash. But I would say Steve Stout is the definition of a corporate tycoon. Uh, you know, what I mean, uh, he's a very different type of guy. Like, if you know how corporate people roll, they're going to do whatever they got to do to get a deal closed. They're going to they're gonna go around. They're going to obfuscate. They will rip a dude off. They're going to do whatever they're going to do because they're going to get money. Because this this game, it's a it's a it's a it's almost like a. It's almost like its own sport. Doing business is almost like a sport when you get up to a certain level. If you listen to how, how Steve was talking, he was really just saying, "Yo, Dame had in line." It sounded like Dame got a business model. He wants to do a business a certain way. Hey, man, you know people wanted to work with other people. You know people wanted to go around Dame. Excuse me, if J Hill owns J Hill Network and he has. A uh, uh, way things need to be run. He ain't gonna like it if JS one go around him yes. and go do something else. Like, <laughs> see, you hear how he was trying to make it seem, yeah, Dame. Why would Dame be upset about that? You know, people just wanted to go around him and do business with other people. Yes, nigga, <laughs> that's 100%, not one hundred percent. I think no, nah, you're right. But so because I had a reputation of being a high head, I do stand in the middle though, because I feel like yo. If you continue, like he, like he said, Steve Stiles, like he didn't want to change. He always was speaking to people how he wanted to speak to people. And although I do understand, trust me, I understand. For if anybody understand how, bro, you gotta. It ain't what you say all the time; it's how you say it, and in the moment you say it, right? Mm-hmm. So I understand that because I was somebody that came from that. So right. on one st- on one side, I do understand standing up for yourself, but on the other side, I understand it's a way to do it. Like think about it, Jay Z. Just Jay Z has been Jay Z for a while now, but he's just only speaking up about Beyonce and the Grammys. We, mm-hmm. but he waited until a time where he can do that. Nobody can take nothing away from Jay Z now. But I feel right. like Dame, he was doing this at a time where he only we talk about value, and sometimes mm-hmm. we overvalue our not over, but sometimes the value we see in ourselves isn't the value that other people see in us, and that's okay. But what happened right. is when you when you get to that that level of confidence, you get to that level of like having that much bravado or or just value in yourself, you sometimes can push people away because they don't see you as valuable. Now right. Jay-Z can say something because everybody see him as Jay-Z. Correct. Dame Dash always seen himself as Dame Dash, which is understandable. And I'm, again, I'm not right. taking nothing away from him, but when we talk about the credibility, credibility, yeah, I can see how it could take away from him because it's like, bro, you ain't who you think you are. You might be that to you, but it ain't to us. You get mm. what I'm saying? So, and, and that's why I said sometimes I, st- I sit in the middle with this because I'm tired. Ty- I'm tired of like being the the black sheep, the, the the guy that can't get in the room because I because people don't people feel like they I can't um they don't trust that I can be around and nothing happens. You know what I'm saying? But on the other side, I understand. Yeah, you should feel that way that you can't just treat me any type of way. Yeah, you right. should feel that that you can't just say anything to me. But it's also just a way to go about it. But because I was yeah. that person, I understand the other side is like yeah, like I don't know. I want to be a Jay Z. I'd rather be Jay Z than Dame. I'm sorry, respectfully. <laughs> I, and I get where you're coming from. All right, but let me let me let me put this in a perspective for you. So, do you remember the Jay Hill uh, that was 23 years old? That, do you remember the mentality that you had and how you approached the world? Yes. Now, put a hundred put a hundred million dollars in that guy's bank account, and then put put the hundred million dollars based off of all of the stuff that you were thinking was real and how life should be at that time and then you executed and you made a hundred million dollars do you think you would be as wise and as humble as you are right now i wouldn't be but that's no excuse to if I, 
Think about <laughs> Trey. And, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for, for Dame. And he even said this himself. He was like, bro, I was 25 years old with $100 million. And he wasn't the only one that was 25 years old with $100 million. So when you look right. back on it. But you also got to remember, he was the he was the one pushing thing. Like Jay was laid back and in the cut. A lot of things that Jay was getting passed over for, Dame was the one that fought for it to put him in the position. Jay had a vision. Dame put that shit into fucking made that shit a reality. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's it's different when you can stand back and see a nigga in the in the field shooting and killing and knocking people over. You can see that, yo, this is a rabid dog, but he's getting it done. He can see the perspective. Dame is in the midst of it, fighting the war. So like he doesn't understand things until 20 years later when he's got time to sit back and reflect and say, yo, I was making mistakes. Yeah, I was screaming on people. Yeah, I was wilding out. But yo, that's who I was. But can we really say, but has much changed? We still... it, it's still, I don't know this man. It still looks like he has the same tone and mannerisms when he have his interviews. Like when he when he when he disagree, he still talks in the same manner. So what has changed? So I, I again I don't I wasn't around, I don't even know like, right. that time. I probably was right. around, but I probably just don't remember. I, I wasn't into the media stuff like that. But right. Steve Stott was saying, bro, he hasn't changed, and it, it doesn't seem like it though. I mean, uh, he might still be the same person. I mean, and, but it goes back to we all choose to occupy the space that we occupy. And he feels like that's the person he needs to be uh, for him to create the life that he wants and to maintain the life that he wants. And he's even though he's in therapy right now, he's still. That he's got th- this is a space where he's still got a lot of growing to do. You know what I mean? But I feel like Dame is a great example of the same things that can make you a millionaire could also destroy you. Mm, the same thing that make you laugh, make you cry. It's all exactly. that same, same reason they love you be the same reason they hate you. Exactly. So even like he mentioned about him traveling with the cameras and stuff. And, and I was talking to Stanley and it's crazy because creative control is what revolt is. But then nobody's seen it then. Right. So like, yeah, I can see how people are judging you and always got something to say. Yeah, I probably had something to respond about it, but I'm just saying, like, from what I've learned, I just don't want to be that Jay Hill. I don't want people like, yeah, I don't know if we could bring Jay around because I don't know if he's going to fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I don't want to be that person. Now, do I still stand on the same rules and principles? Yeah, I do. But I don't I, I don't have to go about it that way. And, and that's just something I learned. Exactly. And, and in the corporate world, there's ways to fight without putting your hands on somebody. Fact. And, and you know what I'm saying? And that, that, that's, the, that, that's the difference between a Steve Stout and a Dame Dash is like they are the same type of dude. It's just they they go about things completely different ways. You know what I mean? So like, and with the, their value system of what they think is important is different. Dame Dash wants to invest in every business on his own. He don't want to take on partners. He wants to own it outright. And no matter what the value is to the outside world, it means everything to him. As long as he's generating his income, he's happy. That's it. So like he's to him, he's a super success, you know, and he has his morals and principles that he stand on that he will never break for anybody. And that's what's important to him. And I tell people, hey, bro, we all have to find those spaces to where we can be, where we can feel successful and be happy and, you know, still grow. I feel like he's still he's I, I, I don't feel like I tell people Dame Dash's final form hasn't been created yet. Hmm. He's still, uh, and there's so much greatness in him. It's just, you know, there's going to be a time for it. Uh, and you still looking at a man who was very hurt that has been violated by his best friend. Jay was his best friend. Hmm. So if you start a business with your best friend and then you find out, instead of your best friend coming to you and saying, bro, I, I yo, I don't like this, I don't want to do this no more, yo, can we dissolve the business? And they just, you find out through somebody else. You got to get an email from somebody or you get pulled into a meeting and then somebody else tells you that your best friend doesn't want to do business with you anymore. How do you think that would make a 30 year old man feel with somebody that you fought tooth and nail to become rich with? Send somebody to pretty much, you know, tell you, hey, yo, it's over. Mm. That's that's going to mess with you. It's going to mess with you. And then it goes public. And then the entire world now weighs in on it. And then, I mean, you can't, again, I don't know that much about the beginning, but you can't yeah. ignore the outcome either. So, like, Jay, who Jay's become, that only adds more fuel to the fire. It only adds, adds more hurt. Like, because it's like, yeah. 
Now, if it was flipped, it probably would be like, you know what? Because I feel like success is the, the best revenge, right? So when you're doing, not saying he's not doing good, right? But the person that is arguably saying the person that you are doing business with and that did you dirty became more successful than you. It's easier to be hurt because it's like, bro, like you got that because of me and I don't mm -hmm. have nothing to show for it. You got that because of me. You got that by doing me dirty. And I, now everybody's praising you and you mm -hmm. shouldn't be the one to be praised. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I definitely imagine that. that. No, the person that whole whole life is about loyalty and and that and then you and you, you feel bad for yourself because, yo, I should have had the discernment to see that this was some person I shouldn't trust. Think about that when you're sitting alone. Mm. Is that damn, yo, a person I hold, I stand my whole life on being able to read people and figure out who's a friend and who's a foe. And the person closest to me was my biggest enemy. Mm. That's something that that's something to process, bro. That's something that's something that can screw your entire life up. Cause now you gotta reevaluate everything around you. Mm. Golly, if, if my best friend, if I could if if I was so blind to see that my what what I thought was my best friend was really somebody that was just using me and and cares so little of me, is willing to cast me aside and not even have a conversation with me. That is hurtful, and it forces me to have to look at everybody around me and go. Who else is this way? Somebody on IG Live said something that was uh interesting. He was like, I'll handle that the, the legal way. I wonder why he never like took it to court or anything, or did he? I don't know. They've had they've had court disputes, but there's really nothing, there's really nothing to fight about because yeah, it's probably not it probably was so. What happened is with business, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know too much about it. Mm -hmm. You can do things the right way, but that don't mean that it's ethically right. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They dissolved. Uh, they, well, they sold Rockefeller back to Def Jam for three hundred million. So all three of them got a hundred million apiece. So then they sold Rockaware for four hundred million. So they all got like another hundred and twenty-five million apiece off of that. And then I think they had one or two more assets. So it wasn't like they stole money from them. It's just that they were doing business together one day, and then literally. The business was, you know, they all they all found out that Jay don't want to do business no more. So now they got to sell a business. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was it was it was that. And then I think I think the other thing uh, Dane was mad about was like, yo, why didn't you? He was kind of like, if you really wanted to be out, why didn't you just sell your interest to me? Allow me the opportunity mm. to buy the interest in my own company. But you didn't do that. You sold your interest to Def Jam. And then kind of put us in a jacked up situation that we ended up having to pull out over. So, like, you know, it, it, it was a uh, it was definitely that it was definitely a, it was definitely a complicated situation.